Hello, my name is Tim Wiegel. I'm the author of the book Leading with Obea. And in this book, I describe how you can use Obea, which means big room in Japanese, as an instrument to lead your organization. And so you could say that leading with Obea is a method that explains how you can use Obea to lead your organization. As a means of reference, there is a reference model which you can download on leadingwithobea.com. It has two parts. The top part is what should be visible in an Obea that is used to lead your team or your organization. And in the bottom part are, are the principles for thinking and acting. In this video, I will show you what the top part should look like if you use this Obea. For example, with the bike factory. The bike factory is a case that I also use uh, to explain how Obea works in my book. And now I'll take you through this particular Obea as an example. So looking at this example of the bike factory, they started at the left top part of the board, the strategic direction. And the first thing they defined as a team is what is our definition of success? So what is our higher goal? Or some people call it purpose. This is what we come out of bed and go to why we go to work every day. If we've defined that, then the next thing that we do here is define the strategic capabilities. These are the things that we need in order to be successful. And strategic capabilities about, are about things that we need, like means, like money, but also about things that we need to be able to do, like we should be able to make our customers happy, or we, sh we should be able to make a profit, some profit at least, to make our, um, our business viable. And for many, many management teams, these things are actually quite similar in topic. So for example, many, many management teams will be concerned about um, uh, customer satisfaction, about finance, about employees, about time to market, about quality, sustainability, safety, security, compliance, etc. So these are usually recurring topics, only these uh, capabilities are then formulated in a way that is applicable to their organization and to their team. And they should match, of course, their strategy, their overall organizational strategy. So these are the things that are important for us in order to be able to achieve our higher goal. Then we move to the next area, which is the performance area. And there the question is, how well is it going? If these things are so important, customer satisfaction, how well is it going? Are customers actually buying our bikes and are they actually happy with it? So these are two interesting indicators. One is red. This one, because we have work to do. We are not living up to our ambition. There's stuff to be discussed in the performance session. The green area, however, is going well enough regarding uh, um, compared to our ambition. So this will not have the priority in our conversation in this OBEA. If we define and we see problems, for example, here with employee satisfaction, and we, we are, it's clear that month after month, we are not getting this in, in control. We are not meeting our ambition. Apparently, we don't understand the problem well enough. This is where we go to the next area, which is the tough problems area. Let's have a look. So in the tough problems area, we really identify the problems that are really tough. So I just gave the example of employee satisfaction. It's not moving on top of the ambition line that we have set as a team. Apparently, we don't understand the problem well enough to come up with a good structured structural solution, which will actually increase the performance there. So what can you do if you have problems that you don't know the solution to? Well, there's one really effective approach that I really like and always recommend to use that one in the OBEA, even though other problem solving methods are fine as well in this area. In this case, I use Toyota Kata. So if we have a problem here, we use a problem structured problem solving approach, in this case, Toyota Kata, where a coach and an improver start working on this problem. And then they report back basically in the performance session about what they have learned. So this is also the only area which is not a team effort, but there's a coach and an improver and they report back in the performance area because as we are trying to solve this, uh, this tough problem, we should see improvements happening here over the time as we are working on it. However, if we do know what to do to solve employee satisfaction, for example, we need to give the canteen in the bike factory a huge upgrade and then everybody will be happy. If our hypothesis is that it's very, very likely that this will actually solve that problem, 
then we can just start a project. Let's upgrade the canteen. It will take a few months. It's quite, quite a lot of work, but let's see if we can make that happen. And this is where we go to the plan to value area. So the plan to value area basically covers with, for our management team in our OBEA, this is what we think we need to do in order to spend our scarce time and resources in the best possible way. That means we have a planning for per quarter. So today is, uh, we are now in November. This should be October, November, December. And there we see milestones. A milestone is a moment in which something of value is being delivered. So it is an output. For example, here is where we have introduced the new working for, from home policy for the bike factory. But for each milestone, there's also a goal, there's a why. Why are we doing this? It is to um, employees receive resources and training from home to work as effectively as possible. How can we then see if this is actually contributing to what we should expect, that is contributing to the strategic capabilities there? So will this introduction from home uh, policy actually lead to higher employee satisfaction because it's more easy for them to work from home? This is something that we will then monitor. This is how you see also that these things are all related. Everything that we do here contributes somehow to our strategic capabilities and therefore also our purpose. But what if something does not go according to plan? This is why we have the act and response area because now we have to act and respond to, to stuff that might already happen tomorrow as we are trying to execute our plan. So the big board is actually our strategic plan. All the way from there to here is what we usually talk about and then put it in a document and then put it in a drawer. Rather now we have it alive on the walls. But the act and respond board is actually going to help us while we are trying to execute this plan because stuff might happen tomorrow that we have not foreseen. How are we going to deal with that? That's the act and respond board. Let's have a look. We have now arrived at the act and respond board. If that's our strategic plan, then the act and respond board is there to help us while we are executing it. Um, the act and respond board is there for uh, picking up problems or requests that come from inside or outside the organization, and they will be addressed in the inbox via one of the uh, mem members of the leadership team. And um, then the problems may be picked up. So a problem is addressed here, discussed by the team and then assigned to somebody. This may lead to actions to start solving the problem. It may lead to decisions or to content discussions. You should also take your time together to really discuss, discuss for example, how will this new working from home policy affect our teams? This is something that you need to have time for. That's why we also have the content session. So these type of ad hoc requests come in the inbox and then find their way through the management team. By doing this very shortly and efficiently, three times a week for a maximum of half an hour, the leadership team is actually really uh, able to really respond quite quickly to stuff that happens, but they are also available to, for example, operational teams that have their problems and usually have to wait another two weeks before the management team has their next management team meeting. Now the management team is actually available three times a week if they do have problems in the operational teams and that they cannot solve themselves, then this is the board to go to. And this is also the last board of the leading with Obea example for the bike factory.